In this video, I'm going to show you something called a jitter plot. And the very first question I get when I talk about this is, what the hell is a jitter plot? So I'm going to show you exactly what that is. But before we begin, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get alerts when I release new videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So let's head over to Tableau. All right, here we are at Tableau. We're just going to use a Superstore data set. It's a very simple visualization. It does get used, um, albeit rarely, but there are cases where it's useful. So just knowing it exists is already a pretty good thing. So let me give you kind of the use case on why uh, we use it. So let's say I have a time period of years. Okay, something very simple. And I've got sales here, right? And let's make this a bar. Okay, and I want to increase the granularity. So I can just hit that hierarchy, increase, and it's kind of okay for months. You know, you can kind of get away with a line or something like that. You can make it a bit more, but then once you get to days, it just becomes far too granular. Um, and that's kind of the problem that sometimes you do want to show like extreme granularity for whatever reason, because um, you want to detect anomalies, let's say. And I can make this a line, and I suppose you can get away with it, but it's still kind of hard to see it in the sea of things. You can probably say, okay, these, and that's all well and good, but visually, it's not the most appealing. <clears throat> so we're going to do something called a jitter. So what we'll do is we're going to move sales into size, right? And you can see kind of the problem is it's going to like overlap all on a single dimension, right? Or a single line. And what we want to do is actually spread that out where the vertical actually doesn't mean anything. We're just spreading them out. And that's kind of the jitter, right? That's what I was kind of taught. Uh, and so the way we do that is using a random function. So let's do that. I'm going to go in here. We're going to go calculated field. Right, I'm going to show you something here as well. So if I type in random, you'll see that there's no such thing as a random function. All right. So if you're trying to find it here, you won't find it. In here, you can type it in though. So if I go random and then double bracket like that, it's actually a workable formula. See, calculation is valid, but it's not in here, which is just weird to me. And then what we're going to do is we're going to minus 0 0.5. And the main reason for that um, is, and I'll show you kind of a before and after without it. So if we go OK, and we're going to bring that jitter plot into the rows. And what you'll see is everything spreads out. We're going to switch this to a circle. And you can see all the individual dots have spread out, sort of like stars. And what that minus 0 0.5 does is it um, gives it like a center line, which is this 0. So it's kind of, it spreads out from the zero up and down. If I go into the jitter formula and we get rid of this 0 0.5, watch what happens. Go, uh, let's get rid of this and go apply. Everything goes upwards, which is not really what we want. We want it to spread kind of in both directions. So we go minus 0 0.5. Why it's 0 0.5? I did a lot of testing and I get it, but it's not worth describing why. It's just that 0 0.5 works, and that's the number. It's It's got to do with the way the random algorithm works. Okay, that's, that's the most I will say. The rest you don't need to know. It's a complete waste of time to know why. All right, so that's our jitter plot. From here, we can actually add some coloring. And straight away, you can see the little ones pop out a little bit, and it's a little bit easier to see. This value actually has no bearing on the results. So we can actually get rid of that. We can format this and get rid of all these lines that that really don't mean anything. Let's do that and we'll get rid of the zero line. So you see that's completely gone. And really, we just want to introduce a really good color to really show the anomalies. So we'll reverse this, all right, and make this larger, go like that. Maybe add a little bit of opacity. Something like this. Okay, so what's good about this visualization is that it's very simple in that you have, you can say, let's say these are all our customers and one, um, or let's say these are all our donations, right? You say, you know, all these are individual donations that have just been spread out. And during this one time, there was this one massive donation, right? Let's dig deeper into that. It's a lot easier to say that than maybe like because of the granularity than a bar chart or something like that. So it is useful. Uh, and But that's basically, it's a very simple thing to do. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like uh, because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to subscribe because I release new videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And until then, have a great day and bye.